This is Coogan Cass, this is for IFL TV in association with MTK Global in Gibraltar. Wayne's over, I'm joined by, talk to me, Eddie Earn. all right mate? I got a Maserati 440, talk to me. I'm going to get a little bit of sunburn in here mate, so, you know, obviously that's why I got the bins on. Do you rate, do you rate the glasses? Because I'm sort of after, um, the, I, I'm not too proud to say it mate, they're my missus's. And I, I, I nicked them a little while ago and I've sort of worn them continuously now. Get quite a lot of stick. A lot of people calling me Terry Tips. Um, so if there's any other brands out there, I'm after sort of the clear lens look, but I've got a big fat head, so I can't wear the small glasses. Do you know what I mean? So these obviously are kind of aviator style. But if there's any glasses brand out there, um, obviously with my recent link up uh, with Dolce Cabana and other major sort of uh, designers, it would have to be high end. But I'm, I'm my agent is interested in, in an eyewear deal. The only thing I can say about this situation is your head is in proportion to your body. Yeah, but obviously, again, with the Oro deal that I've done, a lot of people are already saying, you know, this transformation, six-month transformation thing that I'm doing, a lot of people are already saying they can see, I'm only two weeks in, but they're starting to see that already, which is great. It's encouraging being only, you know, a couple of weeks in. <laughs> We've just finished the uh, bubble <coughs> trouble, <coughs> which I won. But anyway, um, yeah, Bubble Trouble, unbelievable numbers on social media huge. and just huge. And uh, obviously talks of a deal for... Do you uh, like Bubble Trouble? Because I fucking love Bubble Trouble. Like Scott, you know Scott Hamilton, right? Shout, Shout out Scott, Scott Hamilton, Hamilton absolutely. Yeah. Across our content stuff. He's like, Ed, can we do a Bubble Trouble? I'm like, mate, does anyone even enjoy Bubble Trouble? He's going, yeah, like the feedback's really good, but I don't know. Yeah, oh, it was good today. You done well. Barry Jones is great, and uh, Campbell Hatton's hilarious. So, enjoyed it. I've got to be honest with you. It's been an amazing week. Um, I didn't really know what to expect out here. We took a big chance. It's been an absolute logistical nightmare, but it's it's ran quite smoothly this week. I mean, you've been a part of it as well, and I think everyone's re feels really lucky to be here and be given this opportunity, not just to fight, but just to to be part of this event. And um, um, listen, um, we're all incredibly blessed that we uh, can keep the sport going, keep the business going and put on shows like this. And obviously we've had to be creative and it's been very difficult, but I'm really pleased we made the effort and went through the hassle to deliver this. Because I think if you're an outsider watching in this week, I think what you've seen looks sensational. That's great news for the fight. That's great news for the events. Great news for us as a business. And we'll continue to push the boundaries. One thing I do like about you, one Just thing... What, one of many things, or the, no, the one thing? No, one thing in relation to boxing that I like about you. Listen, let's have it right. I've had fucking four vodkas, so I'm going to be a little bit more open in this interview okay. than I normally am. Emotionally, like you're going to be more emotional in this interview? Is it, I, I feel this, Possibly. I could, be, I could actually be walking into a compliment here. Go on. Possibly, but what I will say to you is, when there's something and you, you, you talk about an idea and you think... The fuck is this prick talking about going to Gibraltar and blah 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 in a current pandemic situation, blah blah blah. But one thing I do like about you is when you talk about something, I genuinely think that you have pure intention of actually doing it. I'm not saying it always comes off, but when you talked about Gibraltar, first of all, I was like, you could do it at Wembley on your fucking doorstep. Why are you going to Gibraltar? But you've come here and it was absolutely the right decision to come. 500 fans will be there tomorrow, and I just think I kind of half, half give you props for being able to pull something like this off in the pandemic yeah, we're in. But it's about pushing the boundaries, isn't it? It's very easy, you know, when you look at long-term goals, even medium-term goals, how many times do you, you're faced with two dozen problems before you even kick off? And if you don't overcome those short-term problems, those short-term goals that I call them, you've got no chance of ever achieving anything, medium or long-term. So it's very difficult and it's very easy to jack it in early doors. It doesn't matter if you've got, I mean, jokes aside about fitness, right? If you've got an end goal, of a six month plan, how difficult is that first two or three weeks? That's the toughest part of all of it. And that's the same in business. It's the same in a project. You know, right, we want to do this event in Gibraltar. Are you joking? There's travel restrictions. There's testing restrictions. You've got to speak to the government. You know, you've got to meet the health minister out here. You've got to meet the safety advisory group. You've got to talk about the hotels. You've got to set, set up a bubble. You've got to, oh, by the way, you can't fly there because there's no flights going. So you've got to arrange a private charter plane. You know, th this is stuff that's really easy just to jack it in early doors and go, do you know what? We'll do it in Wembley. And Wembley's been fantastic, by the way. 
But we've got this sick mindset of just overcoming problems and doing things that people either say you can't do or you shouldn't do. And that's what makes us different. Nobody else can do it. And I have to say, as much as, you know, I think, bigging myself up, I'm a visionary, but I can't do it without the team of people. You know that. I mean, I come up with the ideas. They all think I'm mad as well, a lot of them. But then we get the nut down. You know, Frank Smith, one of the best operators in boxing, actually the best operator in boxing. Ross Garrity, great commercial mind, the branding expert. You know, you see everything just looks pristine. John Hill, our operations guy, coming out here, setting this up, tremendous job that he's done. Logistical side, you know, I, I, I must give out a shout to Darren Fleurs, our head of logistics. You know, he's just he making... a lot sure. of Twitter compliments yeah, the other day. Because yeah. he's a good guy, he works hard, and he makes sure everyone's looked after. The girls in the office, Karen, Mandy, Bella, Alex, making sure you know everybody arrives at the hotel, they've got their travel pack, they've got their documentation. It's seamless. Then you've got, on the content side, you've got Jamie, you've got Scott Hamilton done a great job, Mason Kiley is improving and getting better and better. He's fantastic at what he does. Adam Insan from the design point of view, I'm going to miss someone out here and then get in trouble. Dan Barnard, head of media, tremendous job. Um, God, there's probably, and you know, if I've missed you out, I'm sorry, but this is a massive team effort and it couldn't be possible without these people executing the game plan. Because it's very easy for me to go, and guys, I've had this idea, we're going to go to Gibraltar, we're going to go on a ship, we're going to do this, off you go. And that's how it works. And they're the people that make it happen because they're the people that overcome the problems day by day. And we've got a really motivated team. And the thing is, at our business at Matchroom, there are no limits to where you can go. We recruit at a junior level, we have done for years, and not unfortunately, but because of the size and the global expansion, that will change this year in many different departments, but we give people the opportunity to be whatever they want to be. Frank Smith came into the business at 15 or 16. You know, he is the best operator in boxing, and he is, he's my replacement. You know, I'm not going to do this forever. You know, my old man's 71, 72, he's going to be stepping back from the business. I'm going to have to take more responsibility across the board, across the darts, snooker, multi-sports, match and media. And I need a successor, and that is Frank Smith. I'm only going to be cool for another four or five years, and then I'm going to be bald, I'm going to be probably very chubby, the grey hairs all over the gaff. I'm done, you know? So you need to build a team of people, but you need to build a team of people that are motivated. And we're very lucky to have people that enjoy what they do, that are motivated in what they do. For me, it's a family business. It's very easy to get up out of bed in the morning because it's my life, it's my legacy, it's what's been built by my family. But for people that work for the business, how do you give them that same kind of drive? You give it by rewarding them, you give them by giving them great opportunities, you give them a great environment to work in. And that's what I feel we've got with this team. Everyone's pushing for each other. And the plans that we have on a global basis, I'm sweating up here, are just phenomenal. And they all know that, you know, we're cracking America. It's been a two or three year process, but we're in a great position. UK, we're, we've smashed everyone to pieces, but we've still got to stay on top of the game. Globally, the growth is phenomenal, and the plans for this year and next year are breathtaking. So those people are going to come with us on that journey, and they're going to improve, they're going to take more senior positions, they're going to be rewarded for that, and together as a company, we are going to dominate the sport of boxing globally. And events like this make people realise we're for real. And that's what we're doing. So, the, I mean, the best example I can contribute to what you're talking about is that yesterday we were having a discussion where the weigh-in for today's um, event was meant to take place at the Sunbourne here in, in, the ballroom. in the ballroom. And I said to you, I said, actually said to you and your team yesterday, I said, why are you moving it from the weigh-in? Does it really matter that you're actually taking it to a more just because it's more scenic to the Gibraltar rugby pitch, etc. And you said to me, that's your problem. <laughs> you went to me, that's your problem because you're not kind of thinking away from... I just said to you, it will surely save you a few quid by just having it here. At, oh, I, looked at, yeah. I looked at the ballroom and I thought, you could be anywhere. Yeah, we've made the effort to come here, so let's showcase it. You know, let's have the way in at the bottom of the rock of Gibraltar. It's not, it don't take a genius to know that, but... What it does take is it takes the team to go, oh my God, we've got to move all the stuff from here, 15 minutes down the road to Gibraltar. Oh, but when I hear that, I go, yeah, and what? So what, we can't do it? Oh, we can, but, you know, well, let's do it then. 
let's push the boundaries. How much better did that look today? Yeah, it, looked, than it, looked yeah, it was a great, it that. was a great scenic but environment. That is what we do. We're better than anyone else. We make things look the bollocks. Everything that we do is the bollocks, and we just honestly, like, I can't tell you. What, we're not even, I used to say we're 30, 40% where we need to be. We're 10% where we need to be. And we're 10% of where we're going to be as a business. And we have got the model absolute down to perfection. We're going into all these different territories. We're recognised now. You know, we're beginning to become recognised in America. And we're building our brand globally. And this is what we do. That's the difference. The team turns around and says, you know what? Let's take it to the rugby pitch. 10 o'clock last night. Okay get all the transportation down there, we move down there, and we do it and we go, that was a great move. Great move. Push the boundaries at all times. Never, ever settle for the easy option because you will never achieve greatness. Okay, 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 okay. Let's talk about tomorrow night because this is probably the last opportunity I'll get to speak to you before uh, the action commences tomorrow, live on Sky Sports and The Zone, obviously. Um, Dillian White. How have you found him this week? What's the body language? What's the demeanour saying about this? I can't even stress how important this fight is for the career. I'm a bit nervous for Dillian White because of because of you get flashbacks of what happened in the garden. Um, Dillian's been he's kept himself to himself this week. I think fight camp last time was hard, wasn't it? He didn't really want to be around Povetkin. Povetkin is in a hotel just down the road. We've kept everybody apart in that respect. Um, last time he hired a Winnie Bago to try and do that. And it was very difficult, wasn't it? I mean, at that fight camp bubble, we were, everyone was just on top of each other. So I don't think he really wants to talk to anyone, to be honest with you. I mean, we've probably said a couple of dozen words to each other all week. How you doing, mate? Yeah, good. You good? Yeah, good. You know. And he don't want to talk to me. He knows what he's got to do. He's got, you know, everything's been done for him. We've done our job, we've, we've given him the platform, we've, we've given him the big build up, the show has been spectacular. Saturday night, it's his turn to go and do the business and no one can do the fighting for him, no one can do the winning for him and he knows that and he wouldn't want it any other way. He has to go in there and put the wrongs right from the first fight. You know, Alexander Povetkin, you know, chilled, he just feels to himself, I know what I've got to do, I did it last time, I've got to tighten up my defence, but I've got to take my time, pick my shots and knock him out. And they'll be super confident, super confident that they're going to do exactly the same thing. And it is just, like I said, you cannot rest in this fight if you're in the ring or if you're watching at home. You know, whether, wherever you are on Saturday night, whether you're in the arena or you're at home, you just need the edge of your seat. Because until either man is counted out for 10 or the final bell sounds, this fight is not over. And I'm going to be on edge. You know, can you imagine when these two get in the ring? I, I don't know if you've been to the venue. I went there today. It's brilliant. Holds 1,500. We've got 550 in there or something like that. Probably 700 with crew. And it is, it's, it's intense. There's going to be a great atmosphere, but that's what he wanted. He wanted that feeling. And that's one of the reasons we're here. You know? And by the way, as much as I should say, oh, yes, what a great idea from Matrim, Dillian White was the one who was pushing us to do something different, to bring crowds in. So you have to give a shout-out to him and, and the team as well for saying, look, this is an option. And... and for, for our team for executing it. When I spoke to him last night, we were talking about kind of over the last few years and, and dating back to the fight with Joshua that you signed him uh, at the time after his defeat to Joshua. And in the build up to that fight, he kind of had this bitter attitude that your number one heavyweight is anti Joshua and, and still is. And he's kind of had to accept that. But he's, he spoke about your relationship over the years that it has been a little bit up and down. We don't see everything that goes on, but ultimately it seems to kind of work with yourself and Dillian. We respect each other. You know, I mean, the first time that I... I remember when I went to um, sign the AJ Dillian White fight, you know, I was pesting him to sign the fight. And he said, what, drive over to Brixton or wherever it was and I'll meet you in this pub here and we'll, we'll, we'll have a meet. So I went, all right then. So I got in my car, drove over to Brixton Took me about two hours to get there. Pulled up to this pub in the middle of nowhere. I oh, know I drove to Brixton. Then he said, "I'll oh, drive to this pub." So I drove to this pub. I think it was a couple of miles away in Hernhill or something like that. Got out, sat in the sat in the beer garden, just me, right? All these people around me. Obviously, I didn't really. They didn't know who I was at the time. Dillian comes in with about five geezers, you know, 
He, he couldn't stand me. He was looking at me thinking, look at this fucking prick here. You know, we sat down, we talked about the fight. He actually said he had a bit of a damaged hand. I can't remember the full story, but that's where we first met. Then from there, obviously the AJ fight was difficult because whenever you're involved in a fight like that, he feels that I'm against him. Not against him. I wanted Anthony and Joshua to win that fight, but I put the shows on. I give you guys the opportunity. It's over to you. It doesn't matter who I want to win or who. You know, no one gets special treatment, but of course AJ was Olympic champion. What I saw in the fight was a really good heavyweight. You know, a heavyweight that people like, a heavyweight that comes to fight, and a heavyweight that's got a lot of potential. So we started working together after, but I mean, we did the Dave Allen fight, we did another fight, we did a fight in Hull. No, oh, Hull one was before the AJ fight. Then we did Lewinson for the British title. Lewison. Lewison for the British title. And then, I can't, I mean, loads of fights since then. And really, the Chisora fight won. Was, was the breakout fight. You know, that was the big fight where he, or the re-breakout fight, that was just absolutely thrilling. And he went from Chisora 1 into Joseph Parker, into Chisora 2, into Oscar Rivas, into Marius Wack, coming off the back of his nightmare spell, and then Povetkin, Povetkin. So, like, again, like you can't, you can never criticise AJ's resume, you also can't criticise, um, oh, and Hellenius as well, sorry, in between all of those, who just beat Kanaki. So you can never criticise Dillian White's resume. People love Dillian White because he comes to fight and you never, ever get anything but value to mon for money. That's why his pay-per-view numbers are so strong, because people love tuning in. If you know tomorrow night, he's going to give it everything. He might win by knockout, he might lose by knockout, but I'll tell you something now, it's going to be thrilling. And people love people like that. So, of course, the aim is for him to be world heavyweight champion. But Dillian White will always be in thrilling fights. And... You know, for all people talk about what's next after this wilder mandatory position, mate, what's next is Saturday night. That is it. Worry about that after. Be a lovely problem to have. Get the win tomorrow night. This isn't something that I particularly want to think about, but I do want to ask you about it. But I know you, in your job as what you do, you'll be thinking about contingency plans if things don't go his way on Saturday night. But they would be in the eyes of a lot of people and Dillian White himself quite catastrophic if he doesn't get the win against Povetkin by any means necessary yeah, I, I have a plan if he wins or loses to be honest and I've already thought about that but I'm not sharing it because it's irrelevant at this point in time whatever happens tomorrow night we deal with the situation then I believe he's going to win the fight and when he does he's going to be in a fantastic position to go forward and have some massive fights I want him to box three times this year and you know but he has to win tomorrow Let's just kind of just run through the card quickly. Obviously, we know Campbell Hatton makes his much-anticipated yeah. pro debut, and we've seen Campbell Hatton over the last three months doing the amount of media on Good Morning Britain this morning. Yeah. And he is not just um, Ricky's son, but he seems to have showed his own personality and his own kind of ways that were in the mould of Ricky, but it's been really kind of fun to watch the last three months to build up to this. It has. He's a lovely kid. He's a very funny funny bastard, isn't he? I mean, really got a sharp sense of humour. I really like him. I love Ricky out and I think he's great. I mean, how could you not love him as a fighter? And, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of snakes in this business. And although some people might think I'm one of them, I'm really not. But every now and again, you meet genuine people. You know, actually, I'm looking at two of them over there, Jim, Jimmy Mack Senior and Barry Jones. Just people that, that they've got no, they haven't got two sides. They are what they are. And Ricky Hatton is exactly one of those people. You know, he, he hasn't got a bad bone in his body. And watching him this week, imagine having a son that was getting ready to have a pro debut. Imagine being a, a legend of British boxing and your son, who you remember being born, what, 19, 20 years ago, was about to enter the ring on his professional debut. It must be an incredible feeling. I mean, a very nerve-wracking one as well. But we've got a long way to go with Campbell Hatton, just like we had a long way to go with Conor Ben. You know, he's got the genes, he's got plenty of arsehole, he trains his nuts off, he's got ability, but just, he's got ability. He's got potential, but potential that has got to be moulded over the next 12 to 18 months, all over the world, learning, learning. And God willing, get through tomorrow night, and then we move on after that. But he's extremely likeable. And I've seen a few people, uh, people talking about the hate that Campbell, Campbell Hatton's got. Fuck off, excuse my language, but... The hate. How can you hate this kid? How can you even moan? Or how can you put any negativity towards this kid 
who is the son of Ricky Atten, who has trained his absolute nuts off for years and years and years for this opportunity. And the same thing I see it time and time again with certain people, and I'm one of them, whose old man has been extremely successful, and you've got a big dirty chip on your shoulder that says, I want to achieve something myself. And that makes you really difficult to beat, because it's not about the money, it's not about, it's about achieving for you, no one else, for you. And Campbell Hatton wants to be a name in his own right. I see it. Connor Ben wants to be in a name in his own right. He respects his dad, he admires his dad, but he wants to be his own name. He don't want to be Ricky's son. Connor don't want to be Nigel's son. They're proud to be it, but they want to achieve something in their own right. And when you have that drive, you are dangerous. If you have the ability, you can't be beaten because it's much deeper than the material things. It's internal, it's within the soul. It's personal. And that's why I work like I do. That's why I see these kids. You know, you go down that gym, Simsy's gym, ask Tony, Connor Ben, probably the hardest worker in the gym. He had a lovely upbringing. They had money, they had everything. You know, his dad was a legend. But he wants it so bad. And that's what makes you dangerous. So how can you be negative? You know, I get really pissed off with negativity towards people. How sad have you got to be? How shitty has your life got to be to have a pop at a kid like that? You know what I mean? Spot on, absolutely know, spot on. It, listen, it's never going to change. It's just the way our country is. Some people in our country. Let's encourage each other. Let's inspire one another. Let's breathe positivity. It will never happen, but let's give it a try. Let's keep talking about it until they do. And this kid, get behind him. Lovely, lovely kid. Lovely kid. Not arrogant, not stuck up. You know, he's polite. He's got manners. He's a grafter. You know, his old man's a legend. Even if, you, even if you're a fan of his old man, give the boy a benefit of the doubt. And I'm not saying... He's going to come out in the first five fights and look like Sugar Ray Leonard. But he's got potential. He's grafting his nuts off and he's got a dream. Let this family have their dream. Get behind them. And when we do something in Manchester, it's going to be mental. But first things first, get the win tomorrow night. Is someone calling your name? Yeah. Yo! Yeah, mate. We're not allowed off the boat and you've got fans off the boat. Eddie, um... Yusuf Kamara taking on Kane Baker, two very interesting heavyweight fights in Eric Pfeiffer and Nick Webb, and also Fabio Wardley against uh, Eric Molina. Mm. The two fights that kind of, it's hard to pick where they're going. The British title fight between Ted Cheeseman and JJ Metcalf, and Pompey versus Millwall. Yes. Uh, Michael McKinson, who's shouted out for a chance. Mm. He's got his opportunity against Chris Congo, coming off the back of that great Lufa Clay victory back in fight camp. That's the card. Yeah, It's a cracking card. I mean, so many 50-50s on the... On, I mean, you could even call Fabio Wardley Eric Molina a 50, but I'm not because I think Fabio's the favourite in that fight. But really, four 50-50s in Eric Pfeiffer against Nick Webb, which I think is a fascinating little fight. Kamari against Kane Rake is going to be an absolute war. And then, like you said, the two sort of domestic big dust-ups. Chris Congo against Mickinson, which is going to be, you know, tactical at times and intriguing. Great fight, great fight, two undefeated welterweights that no one really wants to box. For me, Cheeseman Metcalf is going to be an absolute firefighter. I mean, both guys, have you seen them? Carved out of stone. Both guys so confident. Just like me and you. Very similar. In fact, when I saw him on the scales today, I thought it was Coogan Cassis. It was only because Cheeseman, you know, looks a bit, you know, run down that I thought it weren't Coogan Cassis because you look so well. You know, but basically, that's going to be an absolute war. And a massive fight in the division because that division's red hot. Fowler's dying out for a massive chance now. You know, you've got Kieran Conway's got a huge fight to be announced coming up. Um, you've got Scott Fitzgerald returning on May the 1st. Uh, you've got Sam Eggington. You know, you've got so many fighters. Josh Kelly could be moving up to 154. So that's a massive fight. And it is a really, really good card. I think everybody that's in there tomorrow night is going to absolutely love it. And if you're tuned in at home, thank you for your support. You're going to love it too. And uh, what else is there to do tomorrow night? You know, other than tune in and watch White Povetkin. Absolutely fuck all. Um, Eddie, where do we get hold of one of the Dillian White Povetkin coins? Uh, good question. We're going to actually buy some. So I, I put a bit of a gag in earlier. I went, how much are the two pound Povetkin White coins? And someone went, five pound. And I went, hey, no they are. I was like, how does that work? They've gone up already. Can you get hold of some? I'll try and get some. Well, when you say get hold of some, just got to buy them. Yeah, Apparently, I mean, Povetkin bought a thousand coins or something like that. That's not accurate. I think it is. There's no way Povetkin bought a thousand Alex, coins. I how haven't many coins did Povetkin buy? 
Oh, 200. I'm a promoter. Oh, mate. Next time Eddie Hearns talks to you about pay-per-view Take numbers, zero. please take 800,000 <laughs> off. Um, okay, so can you just get us one coin? Okay. Just as a, a little okay. favour. Eddie, you know I'm going to ask you. I know I already spoke to you two days ago, but I know while you're here, you'll still be working on potential fights, etc., etc., whatever's going on outside of this uh, Gibraltar bubble. Mm -hmm. But... Has anything developed over the last two days with Fury and AJ? Only just more conversation. I mean, every time I give you an interview, I can't tell you every conversation, but there are... Oh, I, you're I so can, transparent. Yeah, I am, but it's boring. I mean, just wait. You know, we've got like three weeks to go where we've got to finalise the date and venue. That's the time frame. All fighters have signed, all promoters have signed. We're ready to go. We've just got to deliver that to the fighters. Lots of meetings going on next week all around the world. And just, just... You're better off, don't ask me, until either three weeks are up or you've got an announcement. Yeah, that's going to happen. Um, you told me in our last interview two days ago about the kind of, I'm going to put this lightly, the outside chance of Wembley being involved, yeah? And I saw a story the next day, actually, where it's like, Eddie Hearn doesn't rule out Wembley, etc. Yeah, this is what, I mean, what I'm saying is, if we're allowed to have 100,000, <coughs> excuse me, in Wembley, in, at the end of, middle end of July, after the Euros, that would come into play as an option to present to the fighters. That's it. And I saw a thing of you. Someone sent me the Daily Mail. It was like page spread. Wembley, back in the running, you know. So, we'll see. So, again. No. Saudi front runners. We're expecting to fight to be in Saudi. Saudi front runners because we've been there before. We've, you know, the model's in place. We, we have the relationship. We trust these people. They were fantastic at what they do. They, did, they delivered on everything they promised. So, of course, it's very easy for us to do a deal with Saudi and move forward like that. Other people, new suppliers, you know, it takes more time. So, yes, definitely one of the front runners. How often did you talk to Prince Khalid, a.k.a. Big K? Spoke to him yesterday. Prince Khalid's a legend. Listen, Prince Khalid is the driving force behind boxing in Saudi. You know that. I mean, and he, he's, a, he's a huge, huge fan of the sport. And the whole reason that Saudi did Joshua Ruiz was to lead on to the undisputed fight. So, of course, we're definitely trying to get it done with them. OK, um, Eddie, let me just talk to you about... Um, are you all right there, mate? It's very warm. Go on, keep going. It is very warm. It's turned suddenly very warm. Look at people sunbathing here, Edward. Um, Eddie, Everlast yesterday announced uh, a huge pledge to sign 52 fighters yeah, within the sport. Uh, this year, they're obviously associated with the likes of Conor Ben, Boatsy, Ramla Ali, guys that you're associated with. Uh, they've signed Chantel Cameron, Sandy Ryan and Natasha Jonas, announced yesterday. But someone like Everlast, an iconic brand, pledging that kind of money and commitment into boxing can only be positive. Very positive. Any brand that supports the sport is fantastic. Everlast, obviously have a rich history in the sport. So thank you to Everlast for supporting the sport and great to see them back in fighters. Hopefully more brands can become involved in the sport. We're making the, the sport accessible, we're making it attractive, we're making it sexy, we're making it hot. We've seen a huge increase in the number of brands that want to associate themselves with boxing, which is great news for the sport. And there's proof of another one there. Absolutely. Um, have you got any other fights you're working on currently for any other cards that you've announced already? Uh, no, obviously, you know May the 1st. We've got another three fights to announce for May the 1st on the big Chisora Parker card. Um, we have May the 15th, which will be announced next week as well. How strong is that card? Very strong. Headline by Boatsy? Uh, possibly, but Boatsy will be on that card. There will also be a world championship fight on that card. There will be two or three European title fights as well. Big card. Regular Saturday night. Regular Saturday night. I'm not doing a pay-per-view on May the 1st and another one on May 15th. Just, just for you. You guys. never know with you. I've got, I've got to admit, you never know. It's borderline. It's borderline. But I think I'll give you a bit of value on that one. You know, and uh, May the 1st is a phenomenal card. And, um, yeah, all good, mate. Meetings next week and then back for Conor Ben and then over for Andrade against Williams. Spain, Italy... May 1st, May 8th, Canelo Saunders. By the way, Canelo Saunders smashed the pre-sale record for tickets. 40,000 tickets went on pre-sale. And we've just opened up now the rest of them. And uh, it's going to be a big sellout. Undercard for that fight. Can you give us any more information about that? It'll be announced shortly. I'll tell you one fight, which, uh, well, I won't tell you the fight, but it's a massive opportunity for a Brit on that card. Huge step up, but a golden Inkling. We know, I know anyway. But Do you? I absolutely know. I absolutely know. Shall I mouth it to you? Yeah. 
That's the one. Great opportunity for that what fight. What time is this interview going out? Um, well, when do you want it to go out? <laughs> Are you announcing it today? Yeah. What time? I don't know, really. It's a bit early. It probably won't be till late tonight. So. Okay. Do yeah, you know what? Leave don't, because I need to get it out. But, okay, okay that is a great opportunity for that yeah. fighter. Great opportunity for that fighter. <laughs> what, who else? Any other Brits going on that card? Uh, yeah, there'll probably be one other Brit on that card. Frank Sanchez, the big heavyweight with Eddie Reynoso, so he's going to be on there. There's another World Championship fight to announce for that card. Um, looking to get a couple of our kids on that card in step-ups. Mark Castro would also return on that fight card. I believe Keyshawn Davis will fight on that card as well. So... Talking of Keyshawn Davis, obviously he's in action next week in Dubai yeah. on the Frampton Herring card. Um, Eddie, just as a fight, we'll talk about Keyshawn Davis in a second, but Frampton bidding to become Ireland's first free weight world mm -hmm. champion. You've worked with Carl Frampton before. What an opportunity this is for Frampton. Huge, yeah. I mean, look, he's been uh, in some great fights over the years. Tremendous nights in Belfast, great atmosphere. I was lucky to be part of some of them. Um, big fight for him. Tough fight against Jamel Herring. You know, he's a really big 130 pounder, but I think Carl can do it. You know, he's, I think Carl's probably got this in his mind. This is one of his big last hurrahs. And when you've got that in your head, you know, he's going to put everything into this opportunity. So I think he's going to be tough to beat. Shout out to uh, Ahmed Siddiqui and also D4G Promotions for putting this fight on. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great card. And Keyshawn Davis is on that card as well. Yep, on that card. And uh, hopefully we'll be on the Canelo card as well in a few weeks. OK. Eddie, have you got anything else you want to... Are looking on the floor? I've sobered up while I've said anything's been going on. Um, I've got to go yeah. into meetings now, to be honest with you. Meetings? So, like you said a quick one. So, what, how long's this been? Half hour? 35 minutes. Hell. Come on, mate. OK, can I go now? Just give... Do you know what? Come here. Take that. Just tell people why they should be at home tomorrow if they're not in this venue. Oh, everyone's at home. I know you're at home tomorrow night, and I know there's not a huge deal of entertainment around at the moment, but we've got you covered. Tomorrow night, Sky Sports Box Office in the UK and DAZN in 200 countries around the world bring you the big heavyweight rematch, repeat or revenge. Dillian White taking on Alexander Povetkin for the WBC Interim World Heavyweight title. We've also got a heavyweight co-main event. Fabio Wardley, the English heavyweight champion, steps up in a huge fight against two-time world champion Eric Molina. And also the Battle of Britain at £154. Ted Cheeseman against JJ Metcalf. Going to be an absolute war. And beneath that, two avoided 147 pounders. Chris Congo against Michael Mickinson. It's Portsmouth against Millwall in a fantastic domestic fight. Beneath that, Yusuf Kamari, Kane Baker. Winner stays on. Massive opportunity. Those two are going to go at it for 10 rounds. And we even threw in a cheeky little warm-up for you with Eric Pfeiffer against Nick Webb. 10 rounds in the heavyweight division. And of course, the pro debut of Campbell Hatton, son of the legend Ricky Hatton, here in Gibraltar. We're breaking boundaries, but we must see a victory for our man, Dillian White. He has given you entertainment after entertainment, and tomorrow night he will go to war one more time in a rematch he must win. Do not miss it. Enjoy the show. Support the fighters. Love you all. Take care of yourself. We over and out.